Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your spring 2017 nursing and allied health graduates. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, family, friends, and graduates. I'm Dr. Paul Creason, and I'm the Dean of the School of Health, Kinesiology, Science, and Mathematics. Welcome to the 67th completion ceremony for Long Beach City College's nursing and allied health programs. What you have before you are students who are the epitome of success. These are graduates, and they are graduates of some very challenging programs. These students are doers. As Florence Nightingale said, I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took any excuse. These students persevered. Many people dream about success or doing something special. However, the students that are on the stage today woke up every day and worked hard. They learned many new things. They conquered their fears. They worked relentlessly to pass tets, tests and care for patients in a clinical setting. They learned how to perform procedures on human beings. These students made their dream a reality. The college and the faculty are so proud of them. This is a very special group. Ladies and gentlemen, these students, now graduates, exemplify hard work and determination. They did it, and they will serve our community well. Please give them a round of applause. They, they are part of a long history and tradition at Long Beach City College. I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. Long Beach City College is one of, the one of the nation's first associate degree nursing programs. We began our program in 1959 and graduated our first class in 1961. The medical assistant program at Long Beach City College also began in 1959 and the vocational nursing program was developed shortly thereafter in 1962. All of the programs were developed to meet the rapidly growing demand for healthcare workers in this community. For decades, the college has provided training and an educated workforce for employers. We have a long history of success and your graduates are now part of this tradition of excellence. Tonight, we have three groups that will be graduating and they will all be pinned by a faculty member to symbolize their accomplishment. This keeps with the tradition that has existed for many years. The three groups are our medical assistants, our vocational nurses, and our associate degree nursing students who will soon become registered nurses. The future is bright for these graduates. Let me share with you a few statistics from their industries briefly. Medical assistants. Employment of medical assistants is projected to grow 29% through 2022, much faster than the average for all occupations. 
The number of positions that will be available in the coming years makes this one of the most sought after roles in healthcare. There are many opportunities in this field. Vocational nurses. There are currently over 700,000 licensed vocational nurse jobs in the United States. These licensed vocational nurses are very much in demand. The number of licensed vocational nursing jobs is expected to increase 16% in the next decade. Registered nurses. California is home to more than 300,000 actively licensed registered nurses, or RNs, making nursing the single largest health profession in the state. The demand continues to grow, and many of our students will go on to get their bachelor's degrees in nursing, further improving their job prospects. However, the best part for these future RNs is that the median salary in California for a nurse is $90,000 a year. I thought that would get you excited. So what does this mean? Well, it means that these students are well situated for future success and they will have excellent opportunities and very good wages. This night is one of my favorite as the dean of the school. It's so great to see all these students that have met their goals. They look great, they're excited, and I, along with the faculty, have watched each one of them grow and improve. They have made it. I want you once again to recognize what a tremendous achievement this is. Tonight we have some college leaders that want to recognize our graduates. This is one of the most exciting events that we have at the end of the semester. Um, so what I would like to do is uh, I would like to introduce the Board of Trustees members that are here tonight with us. Uh, each of them are here. I'd like to rep uh, introduce Board President Dr. Virginia Baxter, who's on the stage with us. <laughs> Member Sunny Zia. <laughs> Member Jeff Kellogg. Member Doug Otto, and Member Vivian Malaulu. As community members who are well connected in Long Beach, they hear all the time how Long Beach City College uh, nursing and allied health care workers are the best around. Board members, thank you for being with us here tonight. We have a couple more guests on stage that I'll be introducing as they come up to say a few words about our graduates, but we do have one more person in the audience I want to recognize, and that is Anne-Marie Gable, who served as our acting superintendent president for the last six months. Thank you, Anne-Marie. So the first person I'd like to bring up to offer her congratulations is our board president, Dr. Virginia Baxter. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I am so happy to be representing the Board of Trustees this evening. This is one of my favorite events because the enthusiasm just makes everybody feel good. And you have a right to be enthusiastic because you've really completed a long journey and worked really hard. But not only did these people achieve on the stage, you all in the audience helped them succeed because nobody does it alone. So congratulations. One of the things that you do when you're in public service is you serve on a lot of boards. And just recently, I was at the Todd Cancer Institute, which is part of Memorial Hospital. And three of the lead nurses of the Todd Cancer Institute our Long Beach City College graduates. And that made me feel so good. 
I'm happy to say I have not been in a hospital in Long Beach, and I'd like to keep it that way, but I go in to visit people and things like that. But our students are known throughout the community as being the very best, and I'm so glad to be here to congratulate you and to thank you and to represent the Board of Trustees. Thank you, Dr. Baxter. Our next speaker is our new superintendent president, Dr. Reagan Ramali. Dr. Ramali is already very impressed with Long Beach City College, and we couldn't be more happy to have someone with her enthusiasm and vision. She is committed to helping LBCC provide the necessary resources for our top-notch programs. Please welcome our college president, Dr. Reagan Ramali. Good evening, everyone, and can we get a congratulations, graduates? Let's show them some love. Before I tell you how fabulous the graduates are, graduates, would you stand and clap and give some love and some thanks to your family, friends, and, and thank them for what they did to support you. Family and friends, we thank you so much. I know that you helped them get across this stage and we love you and we thank you. So many of the graduates here tonight have faced challenges as they've come across this stage. Many of them are learning English as a second language or they have children or they come from single parents. They're single parents themselves, single mothers, single fathers. They've got children to raise. So they, we are so proud of them for facing these challenges and being able to cross the stage. The Long Beach City College nursing and healthcare graduates are known within the state and within the region and within our city to be the number one. And God forbid when we ever get into a situation, I can't think of anyone I would rather have on my side during those difficult times than a Long Beach City College graduate. Do you agree? So when you find yourself in those situations, and we hope you don't, but if you do, ask for a Long Beach City College graduate and you will get top-notch health care. So I want to say congratulations to the best, best, best nursing and health care graduates in the city and in the state, Long Beach City College graduates. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, we have one more special guest with us tonight, and that is Dr. Terry Long. Dr. Long is the person in charge of all instruction here at Long Beach City College, and she's been a great support for the nursing and allied health programs here. She and I work together to make sure the faculty have the classrooms, technology, equipment, and supplies so that our students get the best education possible. Could you please welcome Dr. Terry Long? Thank you. Family, friends, faculty, and staff, thank you for all you have done for these outstanding students sitting on the, t the stage. Their success is your success. And students, we're so very proud of you and your accomplishments and wish you great success. Go Vikings. Like you, there are many people who have supported the students that we have on stage today. This gives me an opportunity to publicly thank those at this college for helping out. And I would like to uh, thank the Nursing and Allied Health Advisory Committees. I'd like to thank the area hospitals and healthcare facilities who serve as clinical sites and let our students come to their facility and learn. I'd like to thank the Healthcare Associates of the Long Beach City College Foundation that raises money so that we can help provide supplies, scholarships, uh, money in time of need for, for various students on the stage. It's been very helpful. And let's not forget the general education faculty, the faculty that have helped them with their prerequisites in life sciences, the faculty in anatomy, 
physiology and microbiology. We also have classified staff uh, here at the college, and they're the staff members that are on the front lines that are helping do just about everything we do here that's outside of the classroom. They're the first person that your graduates see when they come on our campuses. They work in our many instructional and support labs, and I'd like to acknowledge Liz Alejandrino, Mark Smith, Marie Monas, Sandra Sanchez Rueda, and Kathleen Mays. They're, they're here and here. And I know the graduates will acknowledge them as well. I'd also like to acknowledge just all of our staff, our facility staff, the staff here in, in the auditorium that helped make tonight possible. Now, I would like to have the graduates and family acknowledge the faculty that have guided your students through this program. The nursing and allied health programs are no walk in the park, and your graduate success is a direct result of the hard work and dedication of our Long Beach City College faculty. I would like for our Long Beach City College faculty to stand and be recognized. I would also like to mention some of the faculty that have worked tirelessly to schedule the classes in the clinical sites and that have supported the graduates every step of the way, and those are our program directors. For the medical assistant program, Patty Bucho. For the vocational nursing program, Julie McGill. And for our RN program, Sigrid Sexton. After the ceremony, I'd like to invite you all over to a completion reception that we're doing just across the way in the Student Center. There will be refreshment serves. It will be an opportunity to take pictures and mingle with one another uh, and take some, some last uh, photographs with your, your cohort mates and your families. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about these students that we have on stage. The graduates seated before you have devoted a minimum of two to three years to their healthcare education, and many of them have worked at it for much longer. While taking courses, prerequisites, lab classes, clinical assignments, spending hours of, of homework, studying and test, they were still parents, relatives, employees, friends, and even patients. They have all juggled all of the, these responsibilities, and they have still graduated. This effort and sacrifice makes today's ceremony very special. This program has many dedicated and talented students. I would like to acknowledge the scholars who have graduated with a 3.5 GPA or above. If you refer to your program, they are listed with an asterisk next to their name. So hurry and look for your graduates, see what the deal is. In this term, we have 44 associate degree nursing graduates, 20 vocational nursing graduates, and there are 18 medical assistant graduates. That's a total of 82 graduates who are ready to hit the workforce. This is a huge accomplishment for both the students and Long Beach City College. It should be noted that the graduates reflect the diversity of the great community of Long Beach. Dr. Ramali shared with you some of their characteristics, and I am not going to bore you with more statistics, but I'd like you to take a look when I ask the following questions. Graduates, could you please stand if you're glad you finished. That looks like about 100% to me. Thank you. Will you please stand 
Will you please stand if you worked while you were in school? Thank you. Some of you are going to get tired. Will you please stand if you have a family member in the healthcare field? Oftentimes, family members inspire these graduates to go into the field, so good job. Will you please stand, and we know how important families are, if you are married? Thank you. And will you please stand if you have children? Thank you to all you children who gave up your mom or dad during this period. How about this one, graduates? How many of you want to be married? Oh. Now, you guys remember, I said the median salary is 90 grand, and we're having a reception. Pretty good combination. How many of you speak another language in addition to English? Thank you. How many of you are the first in your family to go to college? Way to go, families. That's really something to be proud of. How many of you are continuing your education to the VN, RN, or transfer BSN program upon completion? Whoa! And this is the one, thank you very much, and this is the one that we're all really interested in. How many of you have a job in the field right now or will as soon as you get your license? Thank you. Some of them weren't quite sure. It must be some interviews are pending or something. I, I don't know what was going on there. They're like, uh, uh, maybe. Okay, so one of the things we do tonight is um, I pick one passage from a final paper and read that passage. It is clear that every person in healthcare is drawn to the field because of a desire to care or to serve or to help others. So as the dean, I select this passage from one of the student papers. Each of these groups have submitted papers that talk about their philosophy and why they went into nursing or allied health. And I would like you to listen carefully because your graduate may have written the paper that I'm reading from. You see, they don't know which passage I picked. But I'm going to read that passage, and I'm going to ask that person to stand, and then that will be the big reveal. So it could be your graduate. So I'm going to do that before we pin each group. The first group that we're going to pin tonight is our medical assistants. So here is a passage from the medical assistant paper that I've selected. Going back to school after being in college for 13 years on and off has given me, given me more confidence made me more knowledgeable, and introduced me to some wonderful teachers and classmates. Medical assisting has taught, has taught me about a, a very wide range of medical information and practices. I feel like I can only go up in this field, and the career options are endless. There's still so much more to learn every day, and it will never stop, and that's something I really appreciate. I am very pleased I made the choice to get my medical assisting certificate at LBCC. My classmates have all been so kind and helpful through this learning process, and my teachers have been a big inspiration and very supportive in making sure that we are ready for the real world and not just the classroom. I am finally happy about the direction my life is taking. And that was written by Kristen Harrell. Well done, Kristen. Sorry to call you out like that. 
I want to take Dean's prerogative and, and mention an honorable mention in this category. Uh, this is a person who told a story of losing her job and being on a job hunt for over a year because she didn't have a formal college education in a field where many did. Then she found the phlebotomy and then the medical assistant program. She, has said, she says she loved it and says, no matter how old you are, it's never too late. And that was Renee Irigori. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite up our student speaker for the medical assisting program. Could you please welcome Norma Guzman? Good evening distinguished guests, faculty, family, and friends. Life is a series of new beginnings. I first read this phrase on a bookmarker given to me the first time I attended college, quite some time ago. And it has resonated with me throughout my life ever since. From the instant we're born and the time thereafter, we encounter many moments of new beginnings such as the different stages of life when growing and developing from childhood to adulthood, when creating new friendships and relationships, some that come and go and those that last forever, when advancing through the levels of education from kindergarten to high school and beyond, or when starting a new job or a new career. For many of us here today, whether it's the first career we are beginning or a new one that we have chosen to pursue, the roads and paths that have brought us to this moment have been different and unique to each one of us. Perhaps each with its own particular struggles or obstacles along the way, which somehow we managed to overcome with perseverance and effort determined to accomplish what we set out to do. Our medical assistant class was one filled with diversity in several aspects, like cultural background, ethnicity, life and work experiences, and even some generation gaps. <laughs> Yet, when we came together in the classroom and lab, we were all one and the same, eager to learn, and participate in class activities, even when it came to giving each other injections. <clears throat> During this time of preparation, we had the opportunity not only to gain more knowledge, skills, and enrich our professional life with new experiences, but also to make new friends and meet some memorable professors like Patty Bucho and Rich Dicker. <clears throat> They showed sincere interest in us, their students, and genuine concern and patience in helping us prepare to be the best medical assistants <clears throat> we can be. They did this by sharing with us their valuable professional work experience and emphasizing the importance of working with integrity, ethics, and moral standards. Always reminding us that when it comes to developing skills, Practice makes better. Thank you both for that vote of confidence instilled in us, which hopefully each one of us will continue to nurture to make that self-confidence grow stronger every day. Giving thanks is a gesture of gratitude, and regardless of the path we took to get here, to this moment, or how long and winding the road may have been, there is certainly something to be thankful for and someone to be grateful to, such as our parents, our family, our friends, our professors, our classmates, and anyone else who in one way or another was a source of guidance and support for us throughout this time. But above all, 
We should also be thankful to God for the blessings of life and health bestowed on us, which have allowed us to make it this far and for what is yet to come. In the words of John F. Kennedy, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. So, as we leave here today, let us keep in mind this idea of living every day feeling thankful and grateful for what we have accomplished thus far. And always remember that with every ending comes a new beginning because life is a series of new beginnings. And so classmates, our new beginning starts now. Let's go make our mark. Thank you. Well done, Norma. Thank you very much. Okay, so as we bring the medical assistance up to be pinned, I'd like to go over a couple brief rules with you all. The first rule is we are here to celebrate, so please feel free to celebrate. I want you to have fun. I want you to show your love, but could you please be respectful? It's important that all families hear their graduates' names. Everyone is here for a particular person, so please, short burst, okay? And then we're gonna move on to the next one. You're also allowed to take pictures. We have a professional photographer that will be taking a picture of each of your graduates being pinned. But if you see your graduate come down, you're welcome to come down the aisle and snap a picture or two right here. Um, please crouch down, be respectful, and return to your seat. But we want you to go ahead and be able to capture that moment yourself. Those uh, professional pictures are gonna be available at our reception afterwards for purchase. So now, uh, Patty Bucho and Rich Dicker, faculty members from the medical assistant program, will pin the students while our other faculty member, Jeannie Bork, reads their names. Lily Acosta. <clears throat> Aureli Aguilar. Rosanelle Joy Asuncion. <clears throat> Yvette Barbosa. Noreen Dator. <clears throat> Susanna Estrada. <clears throat> Norma Patricia Guzman. <clears throat> Kristen Harrell. Beatrix Hernandez Nieves. <clears throat> Renee Irigori. <clears throat> Brianna Lasea. <clears throat> Marlene Murillo Ramirez. Geraldine Ocampo. Ismail Peng. Miriam Rodriguez. Stephanie Tinoco.
And last but not least, Maria Elena Tinoco. Please congratulate our medical assistant graduates. Okay, I will now read a passage from the vocational nursing uh, program papers. It goes like this. Sometimes it is questioned as to why we want to be nurses. We won't get rich, we'll have sleepless nights, we'll get yelled at, get covered in different types of bodily fluids, and even le lose people along the way. It is not about focusing on the cons that come with the career, but about the difference you can make in someone's life in a positive way. When I joined the military, I wanted to become a combat medic. In the end, I ended up choosing a different career path in the opposite direction and became a paratrooper. It wasn't until my son, who was 11 months old at the time, got sick from pneumonia and was ho hospitalized for a week. I watched how his respiratory rate was so fast and his lungs were not fully expanding. I was heartbroken to see how he had to receive oxygen and breathing treatments. I observed how the neonatal intensive care unit nurses at Eggleston Children's Hospital cared for not only my son, but for all the children who were hospitalized. They demonstrated compassion and empathy. The quality of care provided for my son was exceptional. I have also learned that nursing practice was more than just hands-on experience or giving care. I learned that there's a great deal of critical thinking prior and during the care of a patient. As nurses, we, always, we are always thinking about what is and what could be, and always being prepared for different possibilities or outcomes. I am currently a certified nurse assistant. Now I will continue to get licensed as a vocational nurse, bridging to attain my associate degree in nursing pursuing my bachelor's degree in nursing, and then my master's in nursing as a certified registered nurse anesthetist. I am aware that it's a long, tough road, but I will not falter. And that was written by Lizette Sandoval. Well done, Lizette, thank you. And now, I would like to bring up our student speaker representing the vocational nursing class. Please welcome Kiana Howard. Good evening. It is my honor to stand before you representing the vocational nursing class, spring 2017. <laughs> I think we can all breathe a sigh of relief now that this day has finally come. And I'm sure our instructors, our families, our friends, and all of those who have supported us along this journey are breathing their own signs of relief too. So to you, we thank you. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your encouragement. And we thank you for allowing us the time to learn and develop into the vocational nurses you see before you this evening. I want to be honest with you. When I was told I would be representing our class, I didn't really know what to say. I didn't even know where to start. I researched speeches online. I even read blogs on how to deliver a speech. Then I listened to a speech delivered by a student at Harvard University and he said, our stories are the ladders that make it easier for us to touch the stars. 
I began to think about my story, each of our stories, and realized the group of people you see sitting behind me decided a little over a year ago to write a different story, to become educators of health in our communities. I recalled my story. I remember the reason I decided to become a nurse. In 2008, I watched my grandfather battle terminal cancer. The nursing care he received, it inspired me. I realized I wanted to be the person families relied on in difficult times and be there for patients to help educate them on what they're going through. And I felt I had the ability to restore hope and give terminal patients like my grandfather the opportunity to complete their journey on this earth with dignity. I wanted to be their voice, an advocate for those patients and their families. And all of us, the students you see sitting behind me have a story about who they are, where they come from, where they've been, and what motivated them to become a nurse. We began two and a half semesters ago, definitely looking a lot younger. <laughs> the bags under our eyes hadn't quite appeared yet, and I'm pretty sure that was the last time any of us had a full night of sleep. We sat through 581 hours of lecture, 991 laboratory hours, where we learned and perfected our nursing skills. Of those 1,572 hours, we had five clinical rotations at different facilities in Long Beach and San Pedro every Monday and Tuesday beginning at 6.45 a.m. and ending at 3 p.m. For those of you considering nursing, don't let those numbers deter you. The first step is always the most difficult. If you keep putting it off, it will never happen. The time to do it is now. You will not get the year and a half back. In fact, time will continue whether you decide to start or not. But remember, where there is a will, there is a way. And the time to make a change is now. The only thing standing in your way is you. When I think of our class, I don't think of any one person. I think of a community of students who are now nurses. Nurses who joined a community of highly trained, compassionate people who have a certain responsibility and obligation to care for every individual that crosses our paths. It doesn't matter the race, the ethnicity, the background, the economic situation, the education, or even the age of our patients in our care. We have a responsibility to treat them fairly, with dignity and respect. We must not forget that responsibility that we carry both as members of the community and also as citizens of this world. This new chapter in our lives presents to us a new horizon of vast possibilities. Some may be scared to death, but I am confident that we are fully equipped and prepared for those challenges. There is nothing you can't do. In fact, this night should encourage you. Remember your story. Remember why you decided to become a nurse and remember what it took for you to get here. I hope it gives you the motivation to keep climbing, keep reaching until you touch the stars. Grab them and then light up the world. Know that the sky is not the limit, it is only the beginning. Thank you. Pretty inspirational words. Remember I told you that the nurses, they want to care. She's up here on her night trying to encourage you guys and some of you to be a nurse. How about that? Thank you, Kiana. That was excellent. Now I'd like to bring up Ms. McGill, and she will read the names and be assisted in pinning by faculty members Cynthia Bartlow and R Rhonda Alger. Before we begin, I would like to describe the Nursing Student Association. 
This is a volunteer organization made up of pre-nursing and nursing students in promoting leadership and community service. The NSA members volunteer at various events here on campus and within the community, such as boot camp for new nursing students, working first aid station at specialty and community events, running health clinics and flu clinics, where they have given over 2,000 flu vaccinations over this academic year. The Nursing Student Association has two different levels of membership, local and national. Local members must volunteer for a minimum of two um, hours uh, during two semesters. We have in the VN program two students that are participated and the local member. These members are awarded a blue ribbon and will be pinned following our class speaker. Our two faculty pinners are going to be Professor Bartlow and Professor Alger. Kiana Howard. Lillian Che. Joshua Jung. Helen Asrat. Beatriz Avalos. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Callahan. <laughs> Jasmine Carter. <laughs> Semhar Gabriel. <laughs> Maya Garang. <laughs> Renee Lee. Renee! <laughs> Jung Lim. Stephanie Medina. <laughs> Sidia Mercada. <laughs> Helen Morris. <laughs> Cynthia Ortega. Mariana Sanchez. <laughs> Lisette Sandoval. <laughs> Giselle Francesca Saria. Cindy Mirutia. And Vanessa Valencia. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big hand for our vocational nursing graduates? Okay, our final paper tonight, our excerpt from our final paper is uh, from the Associate Degree Nursing Program, and it reads like this. The moment when I decided to enter the nursing field 
was when I was stationed in the Naval Medical Center in San Diego. I was walking towards my vehicle after work when I noticed a young Marine with recent leg amputations having a hard time going up a hill in his wheelchair. I asked him, I asked to help him, and he reluctantly accepted. He seemed to be ashamed of needing help. On the way up the hill, we held a casual conversation and nothing related to his medical condition or his state of mind. Once we reached the top of the hill, he thanked me, and I could see it in his eyes, that he was thanking me for more than just helping him up the hill. He was thanking me for not being judgmental, not asking questions that he was not prepared to answer, and just talking about something other than his condition. The sense of gratitude in his eyes gave me the overwhelming, overwhelming feeling of purpose, and it felt rewarding to help someone. I knew from that encounter, that encounter that that young Marine, that I knew from that encounter with that young Marine that I wanted to be in the nursing field. These experiences, along with the experiences in the nursing program, have shaped my philosophy for nursing. I believe that in, healthcare, in the healthcare field, it is important to love what you do, really care for the patients, and be supportive. I believe that despite a patient's condition, they are a person and not just a disease. It is important for nurses to look at the whole person and not just the disease process. I am committed to treating patients with compassion, respect, and dignity for better patient outcomes. And that was written by Alma Cruz. Well done, Alma. I'd like to point out that Alma also is a 4.0 student. As you can find in your program. I do have an honorable mention for the uh, associate degree nursing program. It was, I was a little bit torn. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the story. Uh, this is a person who told the story of how he was raised by a single mom and how she was his idol because she worked so hard receiving two master's degrees, one in nursing and one in public health. He wrote about how he tried so hard to please her and always got A's in school. That is, until nursing school. <laughs> he concluded by saying that he struggled in nursing school until he realized it's not about him and his grades, but it's about his patients. That was the day he became a nurse, and that was Sam Bolero. That one threw me for a loop. Hi, Sam. Hi, Samantha. See, they really don't know they're going to get it, and I really don't know who's standing up. That's a first, Sam. Our next speaker is representing the Associate Degree Nursing Program, and her name is Rianne Cardenas. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to have you all with us tonight in celebration of our, of our completion of the nursing program. And to my parents sitting in the back who have no idea that I was doing this, surprise. <laughs> I know for many of you, it's the first time you've seen some of us, maybe in weeks, months, some of us maybe even years. Nursing school does that. It makes you mysteriously vanish off the face of the earth for a few months at a time. Nursing is a noble profession. Strangers place their full and complete trust in us, approach us with blind faith, and believe that we will do everything in our power to take care of their loved ones. 
It takes a special kind of person to be a nurse, and to be a good nurse, your heart has to be in it. Nursing goes beyond textbook knowledge and technical skill. Nursing are compassionate, patient, and selfless beings who are driven by their need to care for others. They care for people during the worst, most vulnerable days of their lives. Now, there are a lot of misconceptions about what nursing school is really like. And I know a lot of our family and friends don't really have a good understanding of what it is to be in nursing school, aside from the fact that we're always busy and that we're always studying. So what is nursing school really like? Nursing school is attending Code Greens and going to Skills Lab two weeks before the official start of classes. It's having a sub-module, a quiz, a skills test, and a case study do all in the same week. It's going to three-hour lectures and then racing to the hospital to spend the next few hours picking patients and then staying up until the early hours of the morning researching their medications and pathophysiology. It's dragging yourself to the hospital at 6 a.m. after only a few hours of sleep to take care of the very patients you looked up the night before. It's scrambling to find your nurses right before report and feeling your heart in your throat when it's your turn for med pass. It's doing hours upon hours of preparation and then having your instructor ask you the one thing that you did not look up. <laughs> it's running laps up and down your ring wing for the entire eight or 12 hour shift, answering call lights, giving medications, starting IVs, changing sheets, ambulating patients, changing dressings. And let's not forget the care plans do right in the middle of it all with charting. Don't forget that. <laughs> it's having to study for hours on end because the pathophysiology of a dozen diseases were covered in one lecture, and four of those lectures are on the next test. <laughs> yeah. And because we're a nursing school, of course, the tests aren't just multiple choice. They like to throw in a little bit of math and a little bit of select all that apply in there, too. But what makes it all better in the end is knowing that your peers are with you every single step of the way, suffering every bit as much as you are. <laughs> And it's that mutual suffering that makes nursing students such a tight-knit group. We share the same struggles, we share the same fears. We're there for each other, we support each other, and we help each other get through every obstacle that's placed before us. Nursing school is sacrifice. We sacrifice sleep, we sacrifice our hobbies, we sacrifice precious time with our family, our loved ones, and our, for some of us, our children. We miss birthday parties, anniversaries, and date nights, and instead we study. Our study groups become our second family, and we invade libraries, study rooms, cafeterias, and most importantly, Panera Breads. <laughs> I guarantee you, you'd find my study group hogging the big table at the Cerritos Panera on any given Saturday night. We spend more time with our peers than we do our family, but we make these sacrifices knowing that in the end, it will all be worth it. Nursing school changes you. Family and friends, your loved ones sitting on the stage tonight are not the same people that entered this program. We've experienced a lot of things in our two years here, and we've seen a lot of things that we wish we could unsee. Um, we're smarter, we're stronger, we're more compassionate beings. We've learned to be flexible, to cope with stressful situations, and to adapt to the world around us. We are the definition of endurance and resilience. There is no doubt that nursing school is tough. It's designed that way for good reason. We are responsible for lives. Every action we take affects the well-being of our patients and there is no room for error. Our instructors have raised us to be meticulous, to be safe, to think critically, and to apply our knowledge to the real world. Long Beach City College is known to have some of the most excellent students and has one of the most well-respected programs in the state. And we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for our wonderful staff and um, instructors. None of us would be here today if it weren't for the support of our peers, our faculty, and of course, our loved ones. Thank you to all of the friends and family who have put up with our busy schedules, our late nights, and our labile moods. Thank you for supporting us through our education, for being patient with us, for encouraging us during what many of us consider to be the hardest two years of our lives. We would not be sitting here today at the finish line without your support. Endings, while highly anticipated and sought after, are so very bittersweet. We say goodbye to what's familiar and to what's safe. And we are left exposed to the harsh realities of the real world. But there are far greater things before us than anything we leave behind. We must not be afraid of new beginnings or of the unknown. Our futures are bright and filled with promise. 
Today we close this chapter of our lives and leave behind the title of student nurse and prepare ourselves for the future, for the NCLEX, and for the day that all of our hard work pays off, the day we can finally call ourselves registered nurses. Thank you. Thank you, Rianne. Well done. Now I'd like to invite up our program director for the Associate Degree Nursing Program, Sigrid Sexton, and she's going to present the Faculty Award for Excellence and begin the pinning of our Associate Degree Nursing graduates. Good evening. Before we start pinning, I would like to acknowledge the very special accomplishment of one of our graduates. The Honors Program of Long Beach City College has a long tradition here on campus. Honors classes are smaller than traditional classes and emphasize high-level critical thinking, research, and writing skills. Standards for maintaining membership in the Honors Program are very rigorous. None of us can recall an honor student graduating from our programs. This year we have one, and her name is Alma Cruz. Alma, please stand up to be recognized. I also have an award to present. Each semester, the faculty of the Associate Degree Nursing Program select a student from the graduating class to be honored as the student who best embodies the values of the nursing program. The recipient of this faculty award for excellence will receive a cash award of $250. At this time, I would like to present this graduating class's faculty award, award for excellence to Falon Mock. It's Fallon Mock. In this graduating class, we have 11 students who are active in the Nursing Students Association and will be pinned following our class speaker and before the rest of the class. These students have participated as either local or national members. NSA members will receive their awards after being pinned. Our two pinners for the ADN program are Dr. Joanne Armenia and Ms. Col Colleen Peralta. Dr. Armenia and Ms. Peralta, could you please take your places? Thank you. We will now begin pinning. Okay. So we will now begin pinning. Rianne Cardenas. <laughs> Hannah Diber. Nick Fulton. <laughs> Fallon Mock. Itza Morena. Tanisha Reed. <laughs> Courtney Ann Skaggs. <laughs> Samantha Burns. Karen Dolores Marie Castillo. <laughs> Alicia Kozachenko. <laughs> oh. 
Shirley Morgan. Yeah. Haley Morrissey. Yeah. Natalie Ambroff. Amanda Andrade. Jack Artiga. Roxana Benavides. Samantha Bolero. Annette Chancellor. Ame Shwesham. Gina Ciara Mitaro. Alma Cruz. Anna Danesa. Marlene Dule. Melvin Guevara. Martha Eastless. Shannon Jameson. Simrith Carr. Dami Lee. Mandy Leong. Jenica Marilla Chirik. Jackie Martinez. <laughs> Rebecca McCall. Crystal Colette Negus. Janelle Obrique. <laughs> and her sister, Melanie Obrique. <laughs> Lupe, Lupe Ornelas. Yeah. 
Eris Janelle Parham. Tammy Pham. Rex May San. That's okay. Rose Evelyn Sandoval. Gabriel Sinquez. Jesus Torres. <laughs> Rubicelli Torres. <laughs> Mary Jane Asierto Waples. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for our associate degree nursing graduates. And how about a big round of applause for all of our graduates? The graduates are going to exit the auditorium. Please be seated when they do. But I would like to close by offering a quote by Winston Churchill. Yes, Winston Churchill. He said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Graduates, please go out and give of yourself and make our community better. You have the tools. Now go and represent Long Beach City College and continue to prove that we have the best graduates around. And this concludes our ceremony. Please remain seated. And remember, we have our reception happening across the way. So please join us for some refreshments after you meet up with your graduate outside of the auditorium. Thank you very much.